the White House, President Eisenhower signs the proclamation that makes Alaska's entry into the Union official, nearly 92 years after Lincoln, Secretary of State, bought the territory from the Russian Tsar for $7 million. The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Barney Sports Chalet, supplying hunters with the best hand-selected gear since 1963. The exclusive home of Frontier Gear, built for the rugged Alaskan terrain. Your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Visit Barney's today at 906 West Northern Lights. Big Rays, the Alaskan outfitter, committed to outfitting Alaskans across the state since 1947. Whether you're a recreator, parent, guide, or corporate buyer, Big Rays has the gear you need tailored for Alaska's harsh conditions. Check out their new exclusive line of Aurolic waders. Big Rays for all your outdoor gear and rugged work attire. BigRays.com Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services. Helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck and Alaska Overlander, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and overlanding products, providing all-inclusive rental vehicles and trailers custom outfitted to explore the Alaskan backcountry with a unique and convenient traveling experience. TheTreehouseAK.com located at 341 Boniface Parkway, Alaska's own and grown cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation, with exclusive products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce cards, and more. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. Marijuana has intoxicating effects and may be habit forming and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children and marijuana should not be used by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. The Bait Shack. Located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They are the go-to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Lawn Pro AK, Alaska's year-round professional property maintenance team. Services include weekly lawn care, custom landscaping, fertilizing, weed control, turf repair, and more. Schedule your free estimate at lawnproak.com. Alaska's OG Cider Company, Double Shovel, crafting gluten-free colonial-style ciders, founded as a healthier non-inflammatory brew option. Drop by their pop and tap room in Anchorage off of 58th and Arctic or visit the second location in Kodiak. Double Shovel, award-winning ciders. The Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. BHA is the voice of our Alaskan public lands, waters, and wildlife. Their goal is to uphold our hunting and fishing legacy while keeping our public lands wild. Stand up today and join BHA at BackcountryHunters.org. Here they come. Holler and Caribou are coming in. Uh, welcome to Alaska Wild Project, episode 140. Today we have Ken McKenna from South Central Beat Company. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, guys. Welcome. Yeah. Um, I got the jars for you. The mayor, thanks for coming in as well. No problem. Um, the wife is... I can read between the lines. Angry at you? Angry Maybe. at me? Yeah. For what? Because she's trying to be um, carb-free. And oh, that's pure vegetables, baby. Okay, I know, but pure we, veggies. But you can't just eat the salsa with a spoon. <laughs> you, can, you can, but she's always busting out them chips. Now we have the family size Juanitas at the house. Oh, see, that's oh, where you yeah. failed, man. Yeah, you got to make her some. Oh, I, homemade yeah. chips. Oh, the homemade chips. Uh, I can't make yeah. some homemade chips over there. Oh, yeah, man. You I do? never made you the homemade chips. Oh, I didn't know you did that. Yeah. Oh, dude, you with got the you. with the tortillas, oh. fry them up. That's good. good. I'll do it on Gokana this year. All right, all right. Yeah. That's going to be the move on the Gokana. That sounds good, dude. All, everyone loves them, and the kids. I've made, like, little cinnamon sugar chips out of those before. Yeah. 
Those are pretty good. That's um in Spanish, and they're like called bunuelos. Oh, all right. That's like the Mexican thing. Uh huh. Um, and they add like cinnamon sugar and brown yeah, sugar. Oh, like yeah. if you go to like a churro ish thing. Yeah. Yeah. What uh what kind of like oil do you use when you do that? Uh, peanut. Yeah, you love the peanut oil. Yeah, I like the peanut oil. Yeah, it's really good with the chicken. I'm glad they got give me that hot tip. For frying the chicken. Oh fuck, dude! Just yeah, have you had that. my fried chicken out, the, out there? So, so good, man. Come on, man. You, have you had mine? Not your mama's. I call it not your. There mama's. can be other good fried <laughs> chicken, bud. Oh wait! Oh, you want? Yeah, he knows what's up. Oh, you're trying to have a chicken off? No, we can do it, but I'm not going <laughs> to eat it. You know? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know that meat God. on the bone deal? Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Oh, this guy has yeah. problems. But we can do it. We can cook, we can have a cook off. Yeah, I can bring some dino nuggets for you. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're not bad. Man. They're not bad In a either, pinch, man. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll eat them. Yeah. Have you done a gold can? I have not. It was one of the things that uh, was on my list again this year that I didn't. I just didn't make time for it. That's a tough one because you got to do. I mean, you want to do like at least four days, right? I think we've crammed it into three before. Three but, nights we've crammed it. But I think with the family now that oh, the kids yeah. are coming, I'm thinking four or five days. Yeah, we did five days, four nights this year, and the kids were like, "One more night," you know. So I think we'll add a <laughs> night next year. Where four did days. you guys do? The extra night. Uh, we went back old school because then we, um, I don't want to like name the spots, but um, do you, okay, so we did the lake, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know that spot? Uh, Up on the hill? We did that on the, the third night. Okay. And then you know like the money spot that's in between them? Mm -hmm. We went there and then Lower River, we went like in just one of the king hole, the same king hole we floated through Okay, in the Life Fest a couple of times. Gotcha. Yeah. So those. So what was the extended day after the falls? Well, the um, we we were able to do three days before the falls, three nights before the falls, instead of two nights before the falls. And okay. most people do like one or two nights. So we did it in there. Gotcha. But there is some like competition for camp spots. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure it's getting busier and busier. Yeah. yeah. So don't go, folks. Yeah. Don't go. <laughs> No. They don't, don't know go where Ken. not to go. Don't go, Ken, unless but you come with us. It's real, <laughs> it's real scary out there. Bears in your camp every day. <laughs> what what time of year um, did you go this year? Oh, we we went in July. We tried to go went after most of the people, so we kind of go a little later. But the river's really shallow, yeah. so there's a lot of dragon. But um, yeah, there's incredible fishing. And like a 14 foot self beller, or uh, I have I. Um, that's what I, say, I, have. I have. Most people have 14 or 15 footers. I have a 16 footer, but it has the width of a 14 footer. It's an Air D series, so it's like okay. shaped a little different. It's really navigable and through like tight spots still, even but then holds more weight as 16 footer. Gotcha. Yeah. I picked up one of those uh, nine foot six slip streams this year. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah those are cool. Cool. Nice. The nine six is small, um, so it's kind of tough if you were to do a multi day with <laughs> two people. In yeah, it. yeah. Uh, but one person, you know, yeah. you could you could definitely load it down for you know ten or fourteen days. Um, two people on a day trip, yeah, you can do that. But yeah, it's just it's nice and small, and you can you can really get it in some spots that you wouldn't normally attempt with a larger we, fourteen footer. We didn't get to talk to him, but we think there was a guy that had one of those this year, and he it was just him and his dog. So, but every time we kind of passed him, he was like in a little back eddy or like up in the spot we couldn't stop and say hi yeah so did you get the um the green one or the gray one i went with the gray um the gray one yeah alaska raft and kayak had uh <laughs> they caught me i went in there for you know some repair supplies and uh, old, it was sitting there yeah. and they were having a 15 percent off sale so i was like oh this is <laughs> so damn know, this is just a sign right here so yeah there you go um yeah i picked up the nine six because um i've heard uh, next year they're not going to have that they're oh really go, yeah they're going to go to a 10 six is going to be their smallest one okay which is still only a foot bigger but yeah. i like the fact that you know, i mean I can, I can put it in the back of my truck oh, by myself totally. so just in the truck beds so that's pretty cool yeah how's the um frame set up is it like if you look in the picture behind you with the casting platform is it like this one here yeah so there'd be that one up top there okay um, and so there's no casting platform it has that um drop stitch flooring mm -hmm. so it's super stable yeah. when you stand up on okay. it and everything uh so that's that's real nice um and then i like the fact that you can take the front 
seat off if you mm-hmm. want to just go solo yeah. in it and yeah. it, it opens up so much more cargo space and everything right. but yeah it's a great little raft for you know throwing the dog in or the wife or the kid and just yeah. going on a day trip but yeah being able to roll that up and throw it in a plane and and get it out somewhere um yeah I, nice. I like it so. yeah they're sweet does it have that little i didn't notice it has like a little um anchor thing in the back is that what that is yeah so the um <clears throat> it has an internal um like anchor system so the rope for for the for the anchor runs inside the frame uh so it keeps oh, it real clean oh that's awesome um, okay so yeah nothing catches yeah um, and that's then super slick yeah is that yeah. the one that you wanted to get? no i was looking at the uh the other one right Flycraft. oh yeah 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 and i, I think that's, that's why I'm nrs came out with this was kind of to compete with that yeah it was their answer to the to the flight who makes the Flycraft? air um I don't I'd have to it, look it up. I don't Let me pull that up there. real quick. No, it's not. It oh, it's their own brand. It's, it's their own yeah. brand, oh, okay, right. Yeah. But um, it's kind of that same thing where you got one manufacturer that's making all this stuff with different names, you know. Not NRSs. No. They're but, doing their own thing. But these ones, right, right. these ones, yeah, are probably the same manufacturers as, like, the Gary King ones, the Alaska Outfitter ones. Right, they're just so shaped tar. different, different name. Yeah. yeah did you ever listen to the show we did with um, Brian Brian Richardson from Alaska Raft Connection? If you oh, haven't listened to that one too, I did, did you? One, did yeah. yeah, yeah. That guy has so much knowledge on these rafts, and just like looking at this, like I could see that it has this like ribbed, mm-hmm. that rib thing and that extra layer on the bottom. Right. I mean, yeah, which is, I think the other one didn't have that. Right. But this seems like this is way narrower. This oh is, yeah, these are super narrow. Yeah. They're really narrow, um, <clears throat> just like that slip boat. You know, it helps it. It makes it able to get into those super narrow, super skinny areas. Yeah, that thing is super narrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be fun to do on a go cannon with that, though. Mm-hmm. And it's narrow, but they're super... Sturdy? They're stable, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it'll take a lot to flip it, you know? To get sideways in our hydraulic. Oh, you can even fit three on that, no? Oh, yeah, that's a long <laughs> boy. Is there different lengths on that? Yeah, there are. They've, they've got uh, two mans that you can remove a seat and make it essentially a one man. they got all the way up to guide boats that are, are three man guide boats with casting platforms on the front and the back. Where do they sell that here? Do they, or do you have to order it? No, you have to order it. Okay. Nobody, nobody locally has those. Man, I think there's room. There's room for some more raft always oh 100 because there's really only raft connection and and alaska uh raft and kayak and, and a lot of people don't even know about alaska raft connection you know no he doesn't really advertise very much and his stuff his, is only like on facebook yeah and then his his shops you know off the beaten path over there on hood yeah but he mostly just rents, right? He's not like he, sells, he does sell, yeah, but he I think sells. he mostly rents. rents I think, stuff yeah, out. I think renting is his main. I know there's another rental that Matanuska okay. River rental or okay. something like that. They I got some Valley. sotars and stuff like that. There, they had some specials this year. I saw. Oh, gotcha. I was looking at one of their sotars. I was debating on buying one of those. A used one. No, they had a brand. They had like two brand new ones, and there was a one that was a 14 foot one that was nice. But I mean. It's nine G's. Yeah, yeah they're. Expensive. <laughs> I was like, ah, yeah, maybe not this time. So they're really good. nice though. Good that's boats. the doubles. The Sotar. That's that one's all urethane. Like after Brian came in, dude, I did the deepest dive. I, pull, I it, a, pull it up again. Pull it up. The Sotar yeah. one. Yeah. The double. Let is, me pull up there. The uh, actually, pull up their uh, thing since we're talking about them here. Let's see here. <clears throat> yeah, the air is the one that has the outer and the inner. Yeah, the air is, is uh, yeah, I went down a series uh, here, Matanuska River Supply. They're doing rentals and stuff, and they're new, and they're also building their own, like, frames and stuff like that. Oh, that's So cool. if you're trying to rent their stuff, um, let's see if I can find, they have all SOTARs and stuff like that. But I saw them advertising, they're selling this, like, a red one like that, uh-huh. but I think that was on, like, a 12-foot one. Uh-huh. And then they had a yellow one like that. Oh yeah, that they were selling. Oh okay, okay. But brand new. I was new. thinking of something else. Pretty day on the water right there. Yeah. yeah, that looks nice. That wasn't from this year, was it? 
I don't remember a day this summer that looks. That's so seventeen pretty. weeks ago. Yeah, that was that, <laughs> that one Sunday. Yeah, June twelfth. Like, like we're gonna go down there so we get some pictures. <laughs> yeah, those are really nice. One day, one day. That's a slick setup too, with that second seat on the back. This one here. Yeah. Yeah, the air. Yeah, that looks like one of those uh, hybrid super ones. Yeah. yeah, the super boomers. Yeah. Right. The back is where I like to sit. In the backpack. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I clean up. I like to go in the front. Nah. Like if someone's yeah. oaring, I like to be in the front. That's cool. I like the back because I pick up all the fish that everybody in the front misses. <laughs> getting them, boy. Well, now, He's getting them. Now that we put that uh, table across the back of Daniel's hot tip, man. Now I just. Oh, did you on put that. one back there? Oh, yeah. This was year two having that up there. Okay. Last year it was a dance party floor. This year we caught some fish on it and at a dance party. <laughs> So what I started doing, I have a 14 foot and I put one of those foldable like uh, eight foot tables on the back. So I have a table when I go to the camp and then you can still store bags underneath and then you're going to put weight up on the top. And I, and I, was, I did it purposely so I could bring my dog um, and I put like, uh, you know, that stuff you put in um, in like your cabinet so your dishes don't slide like yep. in a motorhome or stuff oh, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I laced that across the table yeah. so it was not slip and then I'd be able to put like you know, an action packer on one side and like some stuff on the other side. And so there was like a square in yeah. the middle where the dog could just be Chilling. back and not like in the way. Yeah. And you could just stack stuff up on there and it's not like pushing on that floor. Gotcha. We, like, we left, we left it like all, all the way open, open, all the way open and just strapped it down. And we used that same, you know, material take non-slip stuff. But then it became like a giant fishing platform. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, you could stand back there, <laughs> suntan back there. Yeah, it's yeah, nice. It's a great. Hot tip there. It was a good because everyone always piles up like all their like stuff in the back, and right. you pretty much eliminate the ability to go back there. Yeah, but if you have that that table or a chair back there, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. So shout out to those guys. Did uh, Ken? Did you get out on any rafting trips with your raft? Uh, yeah. Um, Willow, a lot of Willow. I'm pretty close, so I spend you know quite a few days throughout the year. Nice, upper and lower, and uh, you know I spent some time on the Kenai with it. Nice, mostly uh, trout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you go? Do you start at that? Um, I floated the Willow several times, but I always start at the bridge and go down to the mouth. But I've wanted to start up there at Shirley Town. Can you start way up high that high? Yeah, you, yeah. you can. Um, it seems. I mean, I've walked from up there. It seems like it's could be pretty yeah so it's, it's one of those um it you know and it changes every year but it's uh it can be pretty pretty sketchy and so i mean you know i pucker up the first you know float of the year because you don't know what's what you know the ice is done and mm -hmm. what the water flow is done and so um i have i have a one man um i love the thing uh -huh. i mean it's uh like a know, pontoon yeah a little one man yeah, cataract and, the shit. you know it's uh if you know push comes to shove I mean, I can trash it, you know, right? And I can walk out. Yeah. You can't really do that with a bigger raft. Yeah, so totally. kind of scoping things out with a smaller raft is, is you know, beneficial for me. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of the style of fishing um, that I do is, is you know, pretty effective with a one man. So, um, yeah, you know, there's benefits of both. But Yeah. What do you, uh, yeah, I have um, a fish cat. I got two of those yeah, fish cat yeah, ones. I got the panther. I used to have the cougar, which I really liked. Mm. They don't make them anymore. The cougar was like an eight footer, like it was shorter. Uh -huh. um, the panther is the same thing. They just went up to a nine foot, and uh, for whatever reason, the material is a little bit thinner than they uh, used okay. to make them. So, you know, still working around that. But yeah, yeah, yeah I love fish those cats things. Are pretty nice. Yeah, the fish cat's nice. It blew a seam this summer. I uh, I fucked up and. It was in the backyard. I had it in the shade, and I had it fully pumped because we, uh, my son likes to take it to like the lakes and and go ch trout fishing and stuff out there. And I, but the wife was going to mow the lawn, and I ended up putting it up on the fence, like on its side, like this. And it was the one day it got like super hot, and it just like just yeah, like it blew the take long. <laughs> It was yeah. done, done. So yeah. try to take it to Brian to, to fix it. It's like ah, uh, might as well just get another one. It was already like I don't know. 15 years old yeah but those things are those things are really nice i like that i'm gonna get another one yeah and i like the the quad pontoon um, yeah thing in them that way 
I mean, I've had it happen multiple times. You know, you 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 hit something, you blow one of those bladders out, mm-hmm. and you can still make it out. I mean, right. it's uncomfortable, but you can still make it out. Um, yeah, so they're they're pretty neat for exploring different stuff. Oh, and, for sure, and getting in the little. Yeah, you could stack a bunch of stuff. I used to put my dog in that little plate yeah. on the back right yeah, there too, cooler. and then yeah. put all the stuff on the side and all that. Yeah, those are those are pretty sweet. Those are nice. That's fun yeah, to ride no, on, the, on the Kino. Yeah, that's what that's what I have is the the Panther. It's a gray one, and uh, I didn't use it much this year, but they're great little little rafts to just yeah, absolutely scoot around up in those rivers up north with that super skinny water. Yeah, yeah. Good for exploring. The, f- yep. the fish cat panther. Oh, this one here. Oh, yeah, that's the one yep, I had. just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except uh, it's gray. Gray? Yeah, that's the yep. one I had, gray. Well, now it's gone, but. Yeah, I think the the cougar was the gray one, I think. Uh, yeah. They might have done a gray panther. And I had an old one that was blue. I was like the yeah, original that, one yeah, that was blue. I remember those, too. Yeah. I had some from Costco for a while, but then I sold them. They were, they were nice. Yeah, th- those are just a single, like two big. Yeah. Right, they weren't the four. Nope. Yeah, this is the two big and pontoons. Yeah, but well we got the um, pack rafts. I sold it, but pack rafts are not good for fishing. I bet that'd be good though to take them the first time in the spring when that willow opens because you can maneuver really quick. What? Or would you be in danger of popping that thing because it's so thin on that? On a pack raft? Yeah. I mean, they're pretty durable, and they're highly maneuverable, so you just stay out of the way okay. and stuff. Um, yeah. You could definitely avoid yeah. some sweepers and stuff. I think it'd be good, because uh, if I'm fishing the willow, if I'm fishing with my buddy Andy, that's the only place he puts in. Yeah. At, at the top? At Shirley At Shirley Town. Yeah. And yep. then where's and he then coming out at? We're going all the way down. Okay. The whole thing. Um, uh-huh. He's just that type of dude, where he's... All day. Or uh, rowing this joker. It yeah. doesn't matter how skinny that water is. Yeah. Trees, we're, we're making our way through it. How long would you say, time-wise, from Shirleytown to the highway, if you just went straight, like didn't stop? Uh, if you just floated straight through, um, I'd say about probably two hours, maybe less. Two hours yeah. or less? Yeah, and another two on the on the other side? Is that about what about it is right? Oh, two? from the yeah, highway yeah. down to the maybe takeout? Two, two yeah. and a half three somewhere around there it's a yeah. little bit longer i think that lower section yeah yeah i think it's probably about three hours yeah it's unfortunate that that guy kind of closed that camp campground oh, oh it's closed yeah, yeah. now yeah he ended up retiring and closing, yeah that, right? that campground is closed now at the mouth no at um, the um the Arthur willow Bridge. creek campground at we're at the mouth where it where the willow flows into no at the at the at bridge the on the oh, highway, at the highway. Oh, okay. on the highway, right. yeah, he has all his uh, Farleys on the left there. What'd you call them? Farleys? Is that the tractor things? That's yeah. That's he who that's that's the name who of used to run it. Oh, yeah. Farleys. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, and so now I think Bear Paw they have um, you know, Shane and, and Kyle they they run out of there. Okay, so they'll launch from that side, but the other side is still open for you know takeouts and. Oh, so they're allowed to launch on that side. They're buddies with that guy or something? Yeah, so that property is like Shane's wife's family and Sierra mm. and Bryce and all. that. That's all family land back there. Like, they all live back there in that land. Gotcha. I think there's like uh, 40-something acres, I think. It's Yeah, it's pretty Oh, big. so was it's, the old man a, who ran it is his, his father-in-law or something? It's a massive amount of property they got back there and it's just they they shut it down to camping Mm -hmm. and because they just want to live their life Mm -hmm. yeah i mean well yeah i went i right before he retired i I think he must have been one of the last times he took someone to drop him off and pick him up he's like i don't normally do this anymore you know he sounded like he was like ready to be done with (laughs) right right all the like touristy stuff so on on the other side you can launch on that side? Yeah, the Pioneer Lodge. Okay. Um, and then Willow Creek Tours, um, they'll take, you know, your launch fee and all that. But they'll do shuttles there as well. Oh, they will on that side. Okay. Yeah, so, And you can call and coordinate ahead of time with those guys too. So it's pretty nice if you're trying to get an early start or whatever. But, yeah, and they've got um, they've got a little shop in there. And we actually put some of our, our beads oh, in there. It? Yeah, so they're selling a few, you know, just a small selection. But you know small selection out of there and 
Yeah, so really good people, Lon yeah, and his wife. I'm forgetting her name right now, but yeah, really, really good people. So well, that's good. You could still access it there. Good to know. Yeah, yeah. That was a fun little campground. There's all the little bunnies running around. The kids would love that. I try to chase those things <laughs> I down. I never camped there. <laughs> no, you never camped there? Mm-mm. I mean, the mosquitoes are kind of ferocious, but I caught no, some nice never. trout just right never. there. Oh, yeah. Like right from that little yeah. campground oh, yeah, right. right there. Yeah, you just walk right down to the shoreline right there. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, fun. I've been yelled at many a times through the years. You know, you come driving through there at 3 o'clock in the morning, hauling your raft and your trailer and just banging stuff. Yeah. And, you know, people live in there, right? And so they're coming out like, yo, why are you making all this noise? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, slow down. But, yeah, it's uh, those guys, you know, they deserve a break. They've been doing it for a long time. You know, it's time for them to enjoy you know, this part of their life, I guess. So. Yeah, no, I get it. I understand. Do people ever um, flo- float down and camp, like on some of those bends? Have you ever seen anybody camping? I haven't personally. Yeah, have you? I have, yeah. Um, it's not too terribly common just because of the length of the float, I imagine. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, I've seen, you know, campsites and stuff. Yeah, probably a lot more when kings were in there. Yeah. Oh, back yeah. in the day. Yeah. There used to be some nice ones in there. Man, the area's changed so much. Like, growing up, that was our king spot before it got paved and nice and bathrooms and all that. It was just a mud <laughs> fest, dude. Just a yeah. mud fest to walk in there. You'd have to walk. It was a few miles. You'd have to walk. You'd just park on the side of the road and yeah. walk back in there. That's where I'd go with my dad, king fishing, and you'd get a couple kings and Dude, it was a trek yeah. and a half getting out of there, carrying all that fish out of there. That's how it was. when I first moved here in 05, that's how it was uh, in Montana Creek. That's where I started the whole fishing ordeal up here uh, in the military. So the guys were like, oh, let's go to Montana Creek. And I'm like, cool, whatever, let's do it. I never fished. And it was just this walk. Through the woods. Oh, yeah. Dead moose. Yeah. And you're like, hold on, man. When a- Big ass brown bear pops up out of the bushes, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> this is how it's going to end. It was like the Russian River on Montana Creek growing up. Like, it was the same thing. It was like you're right next to somebody. Yeah. And all, all the good holes, you know, people are just camped out in them. And it was before, like, the, <clears throat> you know, 8 to midnight or whatever the fishing rules hours changed in the days of the week and stuff. But, um, the trick when I was real little, the trick was that my dad would wear a fishing game hat. Oh yeah, and dude, <laughs> everyone would fucking clear out, dude. He'd have his like little aviators on, and dude, he'd just kind of like walk up and look at what they have right before he, you know, he's not fishing yet, you know. And then they'd kind of all move away, and then I'd start fishing in the hole, and then he'd start fishing in the hole. <laughs> awesome, yeah, it was great, dude. <laughs> Oh, uh, the old <laughs> trick of the trade there, oh, yeah. huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Shout out to Kevin Delaney for those hats. <laughs> That's funny. He My dad happy. wears like a NYPD hat. One of our cousins' husbands was an officer over there for a long time, and he wanted that hat so bad. That's like his fishing hat. And nice. People are always like, "Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. he's bullshit." <laughs> 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 That's the way to do it. Um, Air Force? Yep. How long were you in the Air Force? 20 years and 17 days. Dang, mm. how many minutes? <laughs> mm. Where all did we you go? We won't judge you, though. Yeah, no. We oh, oh, yeah. oh, Army boy over here? We won't judge you. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, you have to get a leg rustling going on here after the show. <laughs> what pushed you to do that? Um kind of a spur of the moment thing you know i was uh i grew up in texas and was working sheet metal my grandfather owned a sheet metal shop and so i'd bounce around a few different places you know through there and spur of the moment it was like i eh, stopped by the recruiter and went home told mom she's like you did what yeah I signed <laughs> up. So, yeah a couple months later i was gone so it was one of those things um i spent you know 19 years in texas um just wanted to see some other stuff yeah and so I joined to travel, and that's what I've been doing. So, and where all did you travel with when you were in there? Um, so stateside, I was uh, stationed at Travis in California. Um, so I spent a couple of years there, and then somehow got 
lucky enough to get an assignment up here. So, you know, I came up here, brought my wife up here, um, and had a really good assignment up here. Um, a nice unit with a lot of time off. And so nice. that really opened up my eyes to Alaska. Um, you know, I got to enjoy it a little bit more than maybe a, a normal service member who gets a tour up here does. So, um, you know, working three days on, three days off, two days on, two days off. And so it was summer times. It was, it was nice. You know, you're gone the whole time off and you're, you know, running back to work to throw your stuff on and shave real quick and get back to work. But so yeah, it opened up, um, Alaska to me and I just fell in love with it. So from there we went to, um, Arkansas, Little Rock, mm. stayed there for not five. Alaska. Not Alaska. Not even close. No. no. <laughs> no and I had originally, um, we had intended on staying here, whether it was a AGR swap over to the guard position, something like that. But mm. my daughter got sick, and they couldn't take care of her up here. So mm. we ended up going down to Arkansas, where they could take care of her. Mm. And so I uh, spent five years there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, from there, we went to England, um, UK. Oh, wow. Yep. So did some did uh, four years over there. And then, you know, finished my career out in Missouri. So, but nice. I knew a lot. We knew Alaska was where we're going to end up. Once, you know, my daughter was good and all that. But like, yeah, we're going back. So. Yeah. Did you fish the White River down there? I did. Yeah. How was that? It was good. You get some monster browns. I got some really good browns. My biggest brown was uh, on the Little Red. Oh, okay. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. I think the the White has the world record brown, right? I think right now they do, yeah. Yeah. I think it does. So Yeah. The Little fun. Red had it for a while. Okay. Yeah. What are you fishing on this? Man, it was such a different, um, you know, I grew up bass fishing, uh-huh. bait caster, uh, you know, <laughs> buzz bait, spinner bait. Come to Alaska, and I was like, what the hell is fly fishing? And, so, you know, they showed me. I was like, all right, cool. I'm a fly fisherman now, yeah. right? And then you go to the lower <laughs> yeah, 48. Yeah, like dry flies, what? <laughs> yeah, and you're like, you know, fishing a tellwater. You're like, yeah, this is not going to cut it, what I, you know, what I've learned up here. So, yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit of a learning curve, but, you know, a lot of really tiny midges. Uh-huh. Um, you know, and there's there's chances for, you know, good fish on streamers too, which is yeah. fun. But, yeah, if you're really serious about it and you really want to um, – you know get into those fish it's it's you know fishing those size 26s and uh-huh. 28s and it's yeah. just you know 7x it's it's a whole different ball game totally yeah but it's cool though yeah did you ever fish any hex flies um no no hexes no uh-huh. never did anything with the hexes um most of it was little midges um i did a lot of um oh, i'm gonna brain fart the name a lot of the kelly gallop flies you know for browns and uh-huh. streamers and stuff like that the zoo cougar things like that okay would throw around woolly buggers for stream you know yeah your streamer fishing and all that um but yeah it was it was really cool learning all that stuff yeah. you know just kind of taking it to the a different level totally but I'll, I'll tell you what i'll come back to alaska and fish this way uh, yeah with a fly rod any day <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> yeah i'm wondering what the percentage is of military boys or families that come and end up deciding to stay it's, oh, it's a lot. It's pretty high, yeah. What yeah. would you say? 50%? Uh, yeah. If you had to guess? If I could, yeah, if I guess, I'd probably say 50, if yeah. not higher. Yeah, it's, yeah I'd, I'd probably lean towards that that general number, yeah. Versus staying, the boy staying in Arkansas? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most of the dudes want to stay up here. It's the wife that you got to kind of yeah, convince, right? The she gets gotta in convince. the outdoor. They're cold. Yeah. There's they some outdoorsy women, their man. Families. Yeah, there are. There, there are some yeah. women that yeah. want to stay here, and the husbands are like, uh, <laughs> I want to go where it's hot, you know? Yeah. But uh, well, The opposite of that. What's your wife do? Uh, so now she's um, she's a manager at uh, one of the local stores out there in Wasilla. Okay. Um, so she's doing that. You know, she's been 20 years me around the military so um good woman man to stick with the uh, oh, yeah. service member for that long oh, and then yeah. hang out afterwards yeah she's a good woman so um she's kind of doing her thing you know i got a part-time job and you know the business stuff keeps us pretty busy but you know we try to stay active yeah okay so you're this is like a full-time thing you're doing i mean uh, part-time and then just so you can get to beaten yeah so um it's it's pretty nice kind of the way we we've done it um you know sp- spend pretty much all winter 
kind of getting what I anticipate what's, you know, what's going to be needed for the year. And then, you know, it's not too hard to sell it once it's already made. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So then I get to spend the summers uh, researching new products and, and testing out things and, and all that. So, so you kind of ma- manufacture everything over the winter. So it's here for the spring. Yep. That's cool. So, so what, what, what coming from Texas, right. And, bass fishing and whatnot and then coming up here but then going back to arkansas and then ending up in missouri and that type of fishing down there what brought you back up here well coming back up here is obvious right but what got you into the bead business so to speak so that is um (laughs) like how does one get into beads right yeah how do you make that a career um (laughs) before you start my my wife this morning she's like who do you have coming on the show and i was like ah oh, ken from uh, south central beat and she's like beats like what kind of beats <laughs> <laughs> and i threw out a, a joke you know and she's like what <laughs> she's like shut up <laughs> and she's like oh you mean like beating like uh like native artistry and stuff like that i was like no 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 like fishing because she's like oh yeah, real interesting <laughs> i was like it is interesting and she's like okay i won't be tuning into that one you know, i was like okay you don't tune into any of them anyway <laughs> so that's the thing with with beads right like you're either really into them yeah or you can't stand them so yeah. you know um but i guess what what got me into this was um i had a good friend that i was stationed here with and it was always kind of our plan towards the end of our career would come back up and open a fly shop and you know we always had this kind of thought you know behind having something of our own um you know out here in alaska and he 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 didn't make it he passed away um before you know we were able to get to that point and so it was kind of you know how do i take what we had kind of envisioned and Uh and make it small scale um you know something with a small footprint um that's you know relatively um easy if you will to produce yeah um, but still kind of have it what you know fit into what i'm interested in what mm-hmm. i enjoy doing what i'm passionate about and so yeah. but we would you know back in the early 2000s we, <laughs> we would spend hours um trading nail polishes right oh, you know, it's yeah. like oh, look at this new one i picked up over here you yeah, know, yeah. And, you know, painting these, <laughs> these, these plastic beads with nail polish and, you know, you, you got the other side of the table. It's like, what are these guys doing with yeah. nail polish and toothpicks? And, <laughs> and it was, you know, it was just something I, I found it interesting. Um, you know, you get out there and there's just such a variety of, you know, the salmon eggs and different stages of all that. And, and so there's, you know, there's, um, I enjoy the, you know, finding the different stages and trying to mimic those as best as possible and you know coming up with some things that really can make the difference you know between man i had a good day fishing and holy smokes like how does that you know how can you catch a hundred fish in that amount of time like a hundred fish to hand you know and so yeah just you know trying to put out a product that has been like tested and proven and that way the the average guy wants to get out for the weekend or whatever has you know a good bead to start with yeah uh, let's take a quick break, and we're going to jump more into that because I got yeah, a lot yeah. of questions. Because I am one of those guys that are into beats. <laughs> Barney's Sports Chalet, supplying hunters and outdoor enthusiasts with the highest quality gear and equipment since they opened their doors in 1963. Barney's carries exclusive brands such as Alpaca Rafts, Sitka Sims, XO Mountain Gear, Hilleberg, and much more. Barney's prides themselves with keeping a huge stock on hand of various top-of-the-line tents, footwear, sleeping bags, optics, cross-country skis, just to name a few. Barney's is also the exclusive retailer of Montana Knives, Seek Outside, Kafaru, Stone Glacier, and their in-house brand, Frontier Gear of Alaska. Barney's has a superior selection of top-rated boots, sleeping bags, dry bags, mountaineering gear, electronics, and accessories. Need freeze-dried food or mountain snacks? They got that too. Barney's now has an amazing new paperback catalog available for in-store pickup or online order. Visit them today at barneysports.com or even better, stop by the store in Anchorage at 906 West Northern Lights. If you want the best, there's only one name in the game, Barney's Sports Chalet. 
the Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. BHA is the voice of our Alaska public lands, waters, and wildlife. From national level policy work to engagement with boots on the ground projects from Kotzebue to Ketchikan. BHA performs public land cleanups, hunting and fishing clinics, and community education to help take your game to the next level. BHA's community-minded goal is to uphold our hunting and fishing legacy while keeping wild lands wild and fostering the next generation of sportsmen and women for years to come. Make sure to follow BHA Alaska for upcoming events, local brewery pint nights, and more. Stand up for Alaska public lands and waters by supporting the Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. Join us today at backcountryhunters.org. The Treehouse AK, your one-stop dispensary located at 341 Boniface Parkway. When you pull up to the Treehouse, you'll notice the beautifully hand-drawn art by Alaska's own Ted Kim. Once you get inside, you're going to see many of the same people that have been there since they opened. The bud tenders know you and what you like and what new product you should be checking out. The store is super clean and the music's always on point. The Treehouse and local owner Josh Boots is a staple in the cannabis culture through his music, community givebacks, and a lifetime desire to bring the people of Alaska the best products available. The Treehouse always has at least 25 strains available, and they're all shown prominently deli style in clear, openable jars so you can see and smell your options. Other products include edibles, concentrates, vape carts, pre-rolls, flour, dab rigs, and anything else you need, they got it. They also have some pretty sick merchandise for sale. Check out thetreehouseak.com, or better yet, stop by the Treehouse today and get started on their loyalty program. Remember, you must be 21 years of age to enter their store. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. Ken, what were you saying about the the dead egg color you're about to? So a lot of times when, like, you know, like we're kicking rocks around to see, you know, kind of what egg color is mm-hmm. in, in those, um, we, we kind of tend to not keep in mind what's actually flowing in the water. Uh-huh. Um, so I'll carry um, like a, a mesh net, uh-huh. like, a, like a painter's. Um, uh, like a hot bag. Yeah. And yeah. I'll wrap that around my net. Uh-huh. And I'll actually get out there in a riffle and see what's actually kicking up. Yeah. Because um, sometimes they, you know, they'll, they'll be eating those dead ones, but that's where making the switch to whatever's actually hitting them in the face can can turn that on from a one fish every five drifts to one fish every drift. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sure. So. Yeah. That's a good idea to bring one of those little hot bags or mesh. What is that? What is that? Just a, like a, a bag that like a fine has, mesh, yeah, that's fine mesh, like a tea bag or oh, okay, you know. gotcha. Mm-hmm. The yep. beer cooler bag, beer cooler bag. You put the beer in the water. Uh, I that's think that would be too thing. big. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, like a finer thing. Yeah, real thing. fine. Yeah, like the painter one, where the or like a hot bag, like what we have. Yeah, I never thought about that. That's a great idea. I used to. A guy in Arkansas showed me that. Oh, really? And you'd get out there and you'd kind of see what size the scuds are or uh-huh. what, what actually, you know, um, is in there. Cause yeah. It, you know, it's another place where if you're fishing a size 14 and they're on the 16s, you're not going to pick up a fish. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you've got to be dialed in the size sure. and, and the color of the scuds and all that. And so uh, just having one kind of handy, I don't use it a lot, but yeah, you know, there's, there's times to pull it out and yeah. check things. So. Yeah, that'd be fun with the kids, man. Like yeah. have them be like, hey, go go take this out here, and you pick the color of bead, you know? That'd be awesome, and size. Yeah, I think um, we got our science project. Yeah. My son is super addicted to fishing, like big time. It's a good and, thing uh, to be addicted to. Yeah, it is. Um, he's my little fishing partner. And so every year his science project in elementary school has been some sort of like fishing you know, like, well, what are you interested in? And then, you know, last year he learned to tie flies and we got so much help, man. Thank you to everyone that, that reached out and, and provided the kits and all the stuff. And we went to different places and he'd learned to do it. And so I, in my own like mind was like, okay, well we did the flies. Now next year we're going to do the beads, but they don't do it in junior high. They don't do, they don't do science projects in junior high. No, that's a bummer. But, the youngest is still in fifth grade, so yeah. I might just be like, hey, I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I got an idea for he's, you. He's going to want to build his own arrow or something. Yep. Yeah, that's Fact. true. He's more in archery than fishing. Fact. He's not into fishing. He's more in archery. 
Uh, so let's backtrack. So you, so you just, you and the buddy were like, we got to get something going here, something of our own in Alaska. Unfortunately, buddy passed away, and then you decided to keep keep it rolling, and then. Yeah, and so you know, I guess one of the biggest questions for somebody who's you know retiring after an extended amount of service is like, what you know, what now? Like, you know, I've been doing this for so long, like. I can turn around and continue doing this on the civilian side if I want to. Um, but I just, you know, I, I wanted to change yeah. um, from, you know, the aircraft mechanic by trade, but wanted to change, wanted to see something different. And uh, so I, I did, I guided for a year and loved it, loved every minute of it. What but, kind of guiding? Um, so I was down on the Kenai, uh-huh. um, mostly sockeye. All right. Uh, we'd do some combo trips, you know, you bust out your sockeye real quick and then you can, Trout fish on the way out and love that. Um, and you're fishing the lower river? Uh, mostly the the middle and upper. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So mostly the middle and upper. I would do a little bit of lower, but. Yeah. Mostly so mostly middle. drift boat then? Yeah. 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 So drift only. Didn't have my six pack at the time. But um, yeah, so I loved that, enjoyed it. But I realized quickly that I was spending just as much, if not more time away from my family yeah. doing that than, than I was in the service, which is why I retired at 20. And I was yeah. like, mm. I need to get back to my girls and my wife. And uh so, you know, I, I, I tried it. I loved it, um, but decided to move, you know, on to something else. But at the same time, we had started goofing around with kind of a business plan, you know, for some beads that I had that, you know, were effective or whatnot. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, so that just kind of snowballed. And then the uh, December of 2019, um, I started South Central Bead Company. All right. And then COVID happened. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So it was kind of a weird time for all of that retirement and new business and then COVID. So, uh, but that's the story of all of our lives right now, right? Yeah. It was a weird time for everyone. So, Um, but yeah, you know, it kind of slowly grew. And uh, over the last couple of years, you know, really putting some dedicated time towards it and starting the website and, and all that. And so it's, it's gotten a little bit bigger, which is cool. Yeah, the website's really nice. I like the logo. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. How did yeah, you get the logo? logo. How'd you get so that? the <laughs> the logo is a uh, cheap. I think it was like an iPhone 11 uh-huh. camera. Yeah. That I took that photo with, uh-huh. and then it's like some pastelish thing. pastel editing yeah. cheap soft you yeah. know, app or something like that. But it works, right? Yeah, you know, so good. yeah, I we like just it. kept it on there. Yeah. Yeah. The um, uh, how easy it is to use this technology and like it's on our phones. It's so, it's so awesome, man. Yeah. The website, um, you know, I was really dreading, you know, starting a website, right? It seems yeah. like it's just a mountain of yeah. things that you got to <laughs> learn and figure out, but you know, they've got, they've got that dialed in now too, yeah, where it's, yeah. you know, it's pretty user friendly and I can do, you know, almost everything from my phone, uh-huh. which is incredible. You know, even look at analytics and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. Which one did you go with? Shopify. Yeah, yeah Shopify yeah. is great. I talked with uh, Matt at Alaska Rod. Uh, you know, we messaged yeah. back and forth a little bit, and he's like, "Yeah, I really like Shopify." And so I played around with a few other ones too, just on their trial things or whatnot. But Shopify, Shopify was definitely um, the better buy for yeah. sure. Yep, and I'm so happy I went with it. Yep. Have you guys done any collabs yet? You and Alaska Rod? Um, no, no, that no. Seems we like a so, cool thing. Yeah. We, you know, maybe there's a uh, maybe there's room out there with his new shop. He might be able to get a bead stick together. Oh or something yeah, like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good idea. Cool. Come on, Matt. Yeah, jump on board. Yeah. Um. So learning like the different egg color phases and the size of the beads and the season and the area and what color and all that is that was that all just like a learning process or did you like dive deep into some some books or some guides or how did you come upon all that knowledge it was mostly a, you know a learning process i think you know back when i was first you know stationed here um knowledge didn't flow as freely so mm-hmm. it was like you know you ask somebody like hey you know what would be where they hit and, and yeah. you weren't getting nothing yeah, from yeah. Them, you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. that chrome bead they yeah. cut their, like, yeah, they none cut their your, line <laughs> none of your business nosy yeah. is yeah. kind of the response you got so yeah. um but yeah it's just, so it was just kind of like figuring out all right you know the generic sizes you start there you know sockeye are this size silver to this size chums are that size kings and so on and so forth and then there's a pretty good variety in you know we'll say northern water versus southern water you know pretty pretty different you know hues from that and so just playing with those oh really is there is there like a um 
there should be like a graphic or like a yeah. um some sort of uh like a chart, like a chart you like know they like, have you know, the uh i don't mean to cut you off but they have the salmon yeah. oh yeah yeah like yeah. different phases yeah the life cycle. when it's in the salt water versus spawning phase and yeah they do every species of salmon that there is yeah the, the cool need, thing you could do that with an egg like mm -hmm. here's yep. a fresh egg here's yeah what it looks like a yeah. week a, two weeks whatever you know and then from yeah. the different species and stuff like we'll that we'll let you have that idea for free <laughs> yeah we need that chart. <laughs> the, the cool thing and, and what it uh what what allows me to continue my business research every year is i'm always finding there's a new color like always mm. and i think so it goes into more of a um you know water temperature mm. quality type thing as the, as how the egg evolves and um. so having a good you know spectrum there um that way you're covered for any you know most situations is good but i like to get out there and and if i find one that's like oh that's a really cool looking one and the next thing you know you pick up a fish and they're barfing up like 20 of them yeah well i'm putting that in a vial and i'm gonna try to play with that yeah. color scheme. okay i did notice that on the site or on one of the pictures that you sent yeah. me that you had a little vial with like fresh ones on there i don't know if it's in here actually you had it in here somewhere I think it was on Instagram. Okay, maybe it was on your Instagram. Yeah. Let me pull that back up. That was a really cool picture. And I was like, that looks like it's like real beads. I mean, real eggs. Yeah. And so I, I had a question about that. You know, pull that uh, picture up real quick. You've got eggs in a vial, right? So obviously you're using those uh, research and development. But how do you decide? which ones go in a vial you know what i mean there they are right there oh yeah that's cool so a trout like spit those up or something yeah and so that that particular one that was um one scoop of the net and that so that's uh that's the quite a variety of, mm -hmm. of eggs that came in one flush you know so yeah. that's um that was kind of a you know i wanted to show the fact that hey look there's a lot of stuff in the water and while you know your you know X bead might have been working right now. Other beads are working. Why, too. you know, why maybe, you know, you need to go to Z right now to switch yeah. it up. But, um, yeah, and so it's, you know, it's getting that, you know, variety, collecting those specimens, if you will, and then taking them back, playing with them. Can I, you know, somewhat simulate that hue, that effect that that bead, you know, egg's putting off, and then getting out and playing with that and seeing if it actually is effective or not. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you try the taste, too? You know, I I, I really <laughs> the think... The what? The taste? Yeah. I really think they have a... I think they taste different. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. I joke around, like, you like know, you call them Skittles, you know. It's like, you know, well, I don't like this one. I, I I don't know. I don't know if it's a scent thing or if it's an actual taste bug thing. All right, all right, right, right. On that we topic... We need a scientist here, right? Yeah, on that yeah. topic, we had a guy... He sent us that ninja net, you remember? Oh, yeah. And he sent those beads. So he was creating these... He's in... I want to say he's in Washington. Um and he was creating um beads in his uh 3d printer and it was a cool way like he had like a, i should pull it up he had like a a way to put the bead on it had like a indent around it so you just go like that with the with the with the line so it yeah. wouldn't slide but then he had some that you would be able to put some sort of scent in there oh, really? which i thought was pretty interesting so that kind of yeah. makes sense with what we're talking about Maybe you have to inject it with it, a little. It seems like it would have. I mean, just think about if you take like a certain food product out of your out of your fridge and you let it sit on the counter. You know, it's like that. Mm. The change of aroma changes probably every couple of hours. Right. You know, and to some like a predator, like a fish, then their sense of smell is so much better than ours. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's got to play a huge role. And you know, I, I learn a lot um, if you can get to those spots. You know. In different times of year or whatever but where you can sight fish to these fish mm -hmm. and so yeah. you're actually mm -hmm. like looking and seeing what their reactions are yeah and you know to be able to stand you know 10 feet away from a you know mid-20s trout yeah. and uh you know cast a few beads and see them just not even respond to it and then to put something on there mm -hmm. that all of a sudden that i mean that fish is keyed in immediately turns and eats and it's like all right so what's the difference here yes like, you know, you would think of an egg's an egg's an egg, mm -hmm. but they might have a favorite flavor at that time. I don't know. So yeah. it's one of those things that's kind of, 
it keeps me entertained. Yeah, yeah. So when you're when you're like starting your day, uh, you know, do you have like a couple in mind that you're going to start with, or do you immediately start get the net out in the water and kick rocks? So at this point, I have um, I have some beads that are I, I usually kind of consider like, all right, here's a standard to start with, mm-hmm. right? And um, you know, it's just years of fishing different creeks. I kind of know what mm-hmm. I want to start with, um, and then it's kind of going from there. So you know, if if you know, I found the standard bead, right? This is the one that's a producing bead that, you know, fish are actively eating. Then I'll start playing around with it, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, here's one. No, he didn't like it. Or they came and looked at it and turned. Mm-hmm. And then every once in a while you find that one that's like, that just took that standard and yeah, you know, went up a level with it's it. It's the gobbler. Yeah. yeah, and they start getting, you know, you get those aggressive takes, like they're chasing this thing down. Or yeah. you got multiple fish going after one bead. It's like, there's something to this right yeah. you know it's not not just in regular eggs so some about it the hue or the way the light hits it or whatever are you finding different colors or patterns like every single year yeah yep every year we find something that's like different than i've seen before hmm. how many different um colors or patterns do you say you have now uh, so right now on our website, we have uh, 14, 14 different colors. And then we have uh, six mils all the way up to 12 mils. We don't have um, everything in 12s. The market just isn't here for that. Yeah. Um, and then seven mils, we're missing a few, but they should be filled next year. So we've got, uh, yeah, I've got some more seven mils. What's, um? I ended up catching a really nice dolly. Like I was just messing around. I threw on a 14 mil. I think I was on the anchor. And then my, my son asked me a great question. He's like, what's producing that? And I'm like, ah, a good question. I don't know. What is, what's what's putting out those big, big beads like that? It's just an attractor. Okay. Yeah, it's just an attractor. And, you know, there's times where I'll throw a 12 mil and it, it works. But, um, you know, I've had people contact, hey, can you make some 20 mils? It's like, no, the market. A 20 oh mil? You throw the bobber yeah. out there? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, those larger beads, the 14s all the way up to the 20s, they get fished quite a bit in the lower 48. Oh, really? Yeah. And okay. up here, um, not that they wouldn't catch a fish. It's just, you know, why why go into that part of the market when it's not really what people yeah. are looking for up here? Right. So the 12 is coming from what species? It, or is it, is it more that it's just kind of absorbing water and expanding and... No, so <clears throat> I'd say a, t- a twelve would still be abnormally large, but mm-hmm. you know you'd be you'd typically you'd be fishing that around a, a king. I still consider a twelve an attractor. Okay, yeah. I have some good trivia on this later. Oh, you do? Okay, okay, okay. Good, 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 good. Um, and an- another thing I learned, um, which I don't know I, why I didn't know this, but that there's soft and hard beads. Yeah, yeah. So they have a lot of people out now that are doing. Um, <clears throat> the soft mold beads mm-hmm. a lot of companies doing that and then there's some that have even taken it a step further they'll have a, a hard bead in the center with a, a soft bead mold all around oh, the outside okay. and that kind of i think that came from the soft beads are a little more difficult to keep on your leader yes uh, and so the the hard bead uh, being the base of it you can still peg it but you still have that mouth feel of the mm. the soft bead I want to talk about the pegs because when you let me borrow that box, I think that every time I've gone to f- look for pegs, I've never mm-hmm. seen the clear ones. And I'm like, why haven't I Mossy. ever seen the clear ones? Like that makes the most sense. Yeah, and they're the you know. And I started off years ago with the toothpick, and then now they have those little orangey ones. Uh-huh. Do they got all different colors? I I've only seen the clear ones. Like you can almost match. They've, they've got cl- I've seen clear, pink, and orange. Okay. Okay. Those are like the main colors, I guess, yeah. that are out there. Yeah. What do you like to use? So I don't, I don't use a peg anymore. Oh, I saw on your picture you had like a little knot. On yeah. The end there. Um, so I guess it, it stems from being able to change colors of a bead, right? Mm-hmm. So if I want to change the size or color, um, if I've got it pegged on there, um, more than likely I'm going to have to cut that. I'm going to mm-hmm. have to retie a whole new tippet section and peg another bead on yeah. there because they kind of they once you once you trim them they're in there yeah and you can you know, get them off with other methods but 
Um, so being able to, one, it saves me from tying extra knots if I need to change a bead out, um, just the way I do it. So, and that's just another extra thing to lose. And it's yeah. definitely not going to slide. Which knot are you using? Um, so I, I went to a, uh, just a double surgeons. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I just use a double surgeon yeah. with a 30 pound test and it's, um, it's about the right, it's the right diameter for the, uh, the whole size we have in our beads. Okay. It's a little bit small if you're using another style of bead with a larger hole. Yeah. Um, you, you would probably want to go in, in, uh, you know, probably a 40 pound tying that with on there. But a lot of people use a uh, nail knot or, you know, there's, there's multiple ways to, right. to really peg these. I just find this more efficient and effective for what I'm trying to do when I'm out there. Have you ever tried the a lot? Research. Not the a lot, not no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, how many inches below that is your hook? Um, so, below that knot to my hook, I do an inch and a half. You do? Okay. okay. Yeah. Have you tried like the micro swivels, like the really tiny ones? So, I've seen those. Um, I have not, yeah, yeah, not thought about that. I've swapped over to them in all my knots steelhead fishing. Mm hmm. And I mean, it doesn't seem to affect the fish, but man, it, like you, it seems like, you know, you're, it's just cleaner. Where um, are you putting that ab- below? For what? That Ste- little swivel. For steelhead? Yeah. A- any break in, um, la- line strength, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, like steelhead fishing all usually use like three strengths. So sometimes two, but, um, or tapered line and then a leader below it. So that at that one, but then put your weights above it, you know, mm-hmm. and so your mm-hmm. weights never slide down. Yeah. Um, but I'm just sitting here curious seeing that I'm like, Oh, I bet those micro swivels would work well too right there. Cause what they're tiny, man. They're about that size. Maybe if not maybe smaller than that, maybe they're bigger. I don't know what size beat. No, they're that small. Is. Yeah. They're, they're small. They're stupid small. Yeah. But they're strong. I've never had a problem yeah. with them, like red fishing on the Kenai and <laughs> snag a fish, and that never the swivel's fine. Yeah. So I use a um, a loop to loop connection, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll have my main leader, and then my tippet is a loop to loop, mm-hmm. and so then I can just pull that yep. tippet section out, throw a new bead on, run it back through that loop to loop, and yep. it's ready to go. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. That is good, because it is annoying to have to switch that whole thing out. It is, yeah, and it's um, and yeah, it takes time at the house to tie, you know, pre kind of pre tie all these. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But when you add that up on the water, mm-hmm. like I'd much rather spend thirty minutes at the house doing this mm-hmm. than waste thirty minutes. Yeah, the water, going yeah, on water the bank, time. pull yeah. the backpack off this oh, big yeah. old box you got on here. the bank. It takes longer than thirty minutes. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like three hours trying to tie that <laughs> joker, and, and then you have the. You know, you're in that rush. You have that rush kind of feel to get everything back together, to get back out there and fishing. And at home, I can just take my time so I know all of my knots are tied exactly the same. Everything's yeah. measured out exactly the same. So there's no variables in mm-hmm. any of that. And so it just comes down to the bead is the variable. Right. So. Are you pre-tying a bunch of leaders and putting in one of the little round zips? So I brought one of these. This is oh, what yeah. I've been using. Yeah. Um, oh, can I see that? Yeah, absolutely. Those are cool. Yeah, those are lifesavers right there. Wait, so what's that one called? Tackle uh, Buddy? Yeah, that's the yeah. Tackle Buddy. And it's cool because I'll keep my uh, the little vials and, you know, some toothpicks I use for my strike indicators, some strike indicators and all that in there. Mm-hmm. And it's all in just one little compact yeah. thing. And, you know, I can either put it in my little side pocket of my backpack or in the chest pocket of my waiter. Yeah. I have, like, the, like, disc style one where it goes in the middle. Mm. But looking at this, I like, think I like this better. Yeah, that is nice. Just so because this, this opens little, up right here. Yep. There, there's like a you could get a little like abrasion on the line and stuff with the other one. Oh, right on! This is awesome. That's where he keeps oh, his, that's yeah. where he keeps that fucking secret stash in there. There it is. Those oh, He's those out are there the twenty on, 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 on the camera. There's the twenty. <laughs> yeah, the twenty mils. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What else you got in there? Oh, oh, there's this bile. Is there something leftover go. rotting eggs in there? No, that one should be clean. Oh, uh-huh, you little liar. <laughs> Look at you. Uh, <laughs> there was a toothpick. <laughs> That's God. actually for after he eats the oh, fish. Oh, yeah, yeah. After right, he right. tastes the beads, see what it tastes yeah. like. Because it, you know, <laughs> you got you to gotta eat the fish, too, to know, you know. So I do I do use the toothpicks to... Um, to secure these? To secure my striking indicator. Gotcha. Yeah, just oh, gotcha, gotcha, away. gotcha. You like these little ones? 
I do. Um, I'll fish those and the one size up. They're mm-hmm. just the cheap corkies. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, the most in a, you know inexpensive way to go for a quote unquote strike in a game. Yeah. So. I've seen a lot of guys using those big. What are those? They're like black, yeah, and orange, and green. Yeah, they're like bobbers. Or, like yeah. thin bobbers. I think a lot of people use them like like center when you're throwing center. center yeah, the center yeah. pin, the drift. Uh, gotcha. And those bobbers. guys can you can gotcha. really bobbers. dial in this a drift. With oh those. yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, you can really dial a drift in. Yeah, you got to get some of those guys testing your beads. Yeah, absolutely. So, so walk us through the process of um, like making a bead. Let's say you find a new color and you're like, hey, I'm gonna I'm test yeah. this out. Color codes too. Please. So it's it's. Basically, um, <laughs> I've, I've got a bunch of different um, medias I use, right? And it's so some of them achieve more of a, um, like a translucent effect or more mm. of an opaque effect. And it's so kind of mixing those, you know, trying to get close to where, you know, what I'm trying to replicate in my vial or whatever and starting there. And then it's just fine tuning, you know, from, you know, at that point, it's just fine tuning and then finding something that one I, I'm happy with that. I like the way it looks and then taking out and seeing if it actually, you know, as effective as, as I think it's going to be. Um, but yeah. And then after that, it's, you know, sometimes I bring them back and I change something, you know, a little bit about them and, <clears throat> you know, just trying to mix it up. So are, are these molded this color or are you painting them? So all of our beads are, are painted. Yep. So we are handcrafting mm, each and nice. every bead. Um, so it is specific. Mm. Um, um, and so we have a manufacturer out on the East coast that does all plastic work. Okay. Um, and so we, you know, when we went down this road, we looked for, um, you know, a quality based product, right. Um, mm-hmm. I've seen over the years, I've seen, you know, kind of products decline in the sense that, uh, yes, it's just a plastic bead. Like do the trout really care if there's a break in it or, or you know a, mm. uh, a flashing like chip, or, chip on it yeah. no probably not but for me as a business owner it's like i want to start with a good product right a good base product so we found a manufacturer that would do our stuff for us and so they you know so right now all of that's out of house um oh have, so they make the plastic and they do the paint for you nope just okay. the plastic okay right? yep and so everything um once we have that i mean we're talking you know, large quantities. Yeah. I was, was going to ask that, like minimum th- 5,000. 5,000 of seven each size. Yeah. 100,000. <laughs> More? Really? Yeah, it's not cheap, and you have to, you know, um, when you have to pay for the molds. Um, so that's a cost in itself, but yeah. you have to pay for the run, but they're not going to run anything that's, you know, a small amount. Right. Yeah. They got to, they gotta you know, get their machinery up and tuned and all that and, and put in a specific way. And so... You, you got to commit to, you know, a, a large quantity. Yeah. And so that's, um, you know, that's a lot of upfront costs and all that. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, but it's, um, they're my beads, right? So when I run seven mils, they're mine. I, they're not going out to anybody else. Um, and so I own, you know, that mold, if you will. Right. Gotcha. Are you are you deciding the diameter of the hole and all, and all that? Mm-hmm. Yep. Gotcha. What is, why, why do they have different diameters of holes? Um, so I went with the smaller one, um, and you'll find some beads out there that have an enormous hole. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. You, know, you can't even. You need two toothpicks. Tooth yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, I think the smaller one, one, it gives you a little more density per, you know, six mil rise. It can be a little right. denser with a smaller hole versus a large gaping hole. Um, and so a little denser, um, you got a little better, uh, I like to call it sink rate really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of companies are kind of out there with the neutral buoyancy or and all that and you know i don't think an egg is neutrally buoyant it's not right. um you I've, I've played with them enough it's not neutrally yeah, they buoyant. bounce on the bottom yeah so there's um i want something that's a little heavier mm-hmm. but not as heavy as some of the um stone beads that mm-hmm. we'll say some companies have so okay yeah so it's kind of a it, it gave me what i was looking for in the plastic that we're using um, kind of matches what I wanted to do as far as my sink rates, you know, and all that. So, did you get to go out and see the process? I have not been out there. Um, I really want to. We have, you know, looking long term plans. I've got a lot going on in life right now. 
one kid moved out. I got another one that's not, you know, she's 16. Uh -huh. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that are yeah. turning in our life right now. And so once that kind of settles, you know, I have some ideas and some ambitions on bringing that, you know, that kind of manufacturing to this area. Uh -huh. um, but, yeah, you're, you're talking a pretty good commitment at that point. And so you know, where I'm at with my life, it's, you know, do I want to complicate it yeah. anymore? Or, sure. Or am I okay with where I'm at right now? So yeah. Yeah. Lots would, of things to think about. It'd be super cool to like, you know, you get to use the beads, you know, that you get to design the beads, then you get to, you know, put your craft into the beads and then other people and yourself are using the beads, but to be able to like see the full circle, right. like the manufacturing would be so dope. Yeah. And it's, you know, there's so many more applications other than just spitting out around beads, right? You know, so... I think here um, in Alaska, there's there's huge application for you know liquid injection molding and mm -hmm. and and stuff like that, and so the potential's there. You know, it's just whether I want to go after it or not. Yeah. What is a liquid injection molding? Um, so that's basically where they're taking a liquid. So that all plastic comes in like tiny pellets, if you mm -hmm. will, and then you use a hopper and they heat it up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it can flow uh, and then there's the that flow that liquid plastic is then injected into a mold or mm -hmm. a, you know the cavity or whatever you're trying to design and from there it's cooled and injected and all that but there's a lot of this <laughs> i've yeah. looked into it and i'm a hydraulic guy by trade and there's a lot of us like man that's way outside yeah, my scope yeah, you know yeah. so i wonder like how many little little molds are in their mold like is there like a thousand or like one no yeah. it's, you know uh, <laughs> it's, yeah it's, they're spit out multiples yeah yeah yeah. It's, yeah but yeah. it's still it's a um it's still a long process to do the run yeah you know, but it's all automated it's not like there's a guy sitting there just no yeah, yeah. Totally. Out, you know, so. someone's running the equipment yep yep so and then so then it, like it's heated it's melted and then it probably goes to a spot where it's like mixed with whatever color right that you want to use yeah most of the um <clears throat> and you can that's where it would be nice to have my own facility right because then i can fine tune what i'm actually mixing mm -hmm. into the acrylic mm -hmm. and, and achieve different effects that way um, but most of it comes in like a like here's your base color and then you know you add like you know one times this and two times that and that's where this color comes from okay so so there's not like all the different um colors options like you would see like in uh, like uh, adobe illustrator no you can't be like oh use this file no nope. yeah, yeah it's okay. uh, yeah it's pretty uh pretty generic if you will yeah 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 when you sit down and you're like okay i like this i like this color i like this size i'm about to sit down and paint these do you sit down and you're like i'm gonna do f 300 of them today or is it like do you have a set strategy so the the process we've kind of fine tuned, um, and which is why it's nice doing it over winter because I've the first year and two we kind of try to keep up with orders. You know, we were just kind of selling to the pro shops, and so they would put up, "Hey, I need you know five hundred bags." Okay, well now it's scramble time. We're making five hundred bags. I'm making twenty four of this, twenty four of that, and so yeah, now it's more of a smooth process. Like I can spend a week where um, you know I'm. I'm dedicated to, we'll say, painting, right? And so everything's painting, and it's drying, and it's waiting. And the next week, it comes down to, you know, a, a different step of the process. Right. And so it's kind of more of a uh, streamlined production, if you will, mm -hmm. doing it this way. Um, I do miss kind of the adrenaline rush when you get an order. Yeah, you yeah, know, that yeah. was fun, and trying to keep up. But now it's like, now I have my own, you know, own wall with, like, uh, it's basically a store, right? So mm -hmm. I get an online order, um, click a few buttons, spits out a, uh, a shipping in, you know, shipping, and then a um, packing list, and, and I walk out to my garage and I'm pulling things off pegs, throwing yeah. them in the bag, and it's all, but it's all, you know, all done over the winter, building up that, uh, yeah. you know, that inventory. How, how time consuming is a painting process? Um, so different beads are a little bit. You know, it kind of depends on what um, what beat it is, uh, but I can I can tell you um, that on average um, we're looking at about three and a half minutes per bag. Okay. Yeah. What's the most difficult Damn. one to paint? Um, so it's going to be the ones that I'm putting out this year. <laughs> did, yeah. did you bring any? I did. I think. 
Do, you, do they have cool names? Oh, can I see too? the mix? One of those mix bags. So when you're painting them, do you do you have them like all on a string? How how are you doing that? That is proprietary. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> when they come, are they clear? The base bead. Some of them are. Okay. Okay. So you get some with some sort of color. Man, this looks really translucent. Are these going to be in production? Yes. How do you come up with the names? Uh, Y'all ain't got these. (laughs) (laughs) But I do. The way that the light reflects off this is amazing. It's uh, like every part that the light shines on just looks translucent when you. That was my, that's been my favorite bead. Um. Up north, it was really fun to p- <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> I'll get back to you. Um, yeah, it was really fun bee to fish this year, and everything from uh, you know the concept behind it, and uh, you know making it to actually putting it out in the water was it's pretty cool. It's uh, I like to call them sexy. So yeah, the names though, that's uh, something that you know the family and I kind of decide on. And it used to be the girls. They really aren't into it anymore. Yeah. You know, being 16 and 18, who wants to sit yeah. down with mom and dad and come up with names? Yeah. But so now it's kind of me and the, you know, the wife. But you know, we try to, you know, keep it fun, right? You know, play on some puns and yeah. you know, some different things that we're enjoying in that part of our life and all that. So, wow. The, so, like the center of this one where the hole is, it looks yellow. It's pretty cool. And and that's where, like, when you start um, getting into that, like, you're not going to find an egg out there that actually looks exactly yeah, like that. Yeah, totally. You're going to see right, something right. similar. But when you throw that and then all of a sudden you see, a, you know, a trout that's, you know, three feet away Come just to turn it. 90 degrees and nail it, it's like, yeah. all right, well, there's something about that yeah. color scheme that they're really finding, you know, right. attractive. So. Yep. Yeah, this is really cool. Which one was this one? That's a secret one. Oh, this is one of the secret new sauce. secret ones. Yeah, too? it'll be one of the new ones. All right. Secret sauce. And same as that. That's 23B. 23B. Yep. Area 51. Oh, oh yeah. A- AWP. So I have to write that <laughs> when I, you know, when we're coming up with, because I'll probably start the year with like, you know, 12 different, like, oh, these are fun, right? And then yeah. you, you kind of slowly narrow them down pretty quickly. But so to keep track of that, it's kind of like, you know, I got to, I got to number them because we don't really mess with the names until. We decided it's a, a go on it. So. so how many 23 slash letters do you have this year? So we ended up having seven, I think, okay. this year. Yeah. All right. Cool. Awesome. There was, I, did a, I did a giveaway. I did, um, I think it was like 12 boxes, right? So when, when I made all my test beats for the year, I did like 12 individual boxes, and we gave some away and, you know, some through the website or whatever. Uh-huh. And then, you know, I got some feedback from different people, you know, kind of telling me what they saw with them, which was cool. You know, All it's right. not just me and right. my experience. It's actual people out there using them and, you know, did it make a difference or not. But there was, there's always some that I, I keep to myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I have. <laughs> Those are the ones I need to get my hands on. I have one that this year, um, and I'll show it to you. I said, show it. To <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. Ah, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. yeah. No, but that was one, your sweetheart this year. That one is a very, um, a very unique beat, and I've never had one where it kind of showed me the same thing in both glacial waters mm. and you know, like. Clear. Okay. Yeah, it was. I could come behind any place that I was fishing and throw that, and yeah, it would make a. Uh, Big difference. Even if I cleaned up, you know, they would start turning on that. That's so pretty it's, cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Pretty neat to have that one. So it's kind of like, man, the you know the desire to get it out there. To, you know, like, hey, look, this one's cool. Check yeah. it out. But there's also that, hey, let me play with this for a little while. Yeah, yeah. Let me enjoy it for a second. You save it for yeah. later. Yeah. yeah. Do you What's think that that that? Go ahead. No, I was going to ask a silly question on the strategy of where you place your beads in the box. Is it? color like bright to dark is it size and then color i've seen different people do different things and, and his is a little even more ocd like super labeled so I, I i i will say this i think i start every year with a different like it's 
they're in there differently uh -huh. and then by the end of the year it's a giant mess yeah. and so they all pretty much as long as they're the same color they're going in the same hole yeah um, this is actually one of my clean boxes that's why i brought this one right? <laughs> I, I usually carry um i'll carry a large one of this style i like the miho boxes they they make good stuff um, but i'll carry the large one of that and then that's when i've got my full range of of everything and I like to play with it at the beginning of the year and make sure it looks all clean and all that, but it doesn't stay that way. Yeah. Yeah. I like to give it to my kids and just be like, here, organize this. Yours is OCD. Super. Yeah, it stays like that all year, there. too. Yeah. He has yeah. his label on there with the little, with the names and all that. I can't do the mixing of the colors. <laughs> like, no. Nope. Don't look at my box. Swap them out and put them in the exact same one. Yeah. yeah. How many squares do you say you need? These? How many you got there? What is that? A f one, two, three, four by. This one, was um, twenty. Four by six. I think this was twenty three, twenty four. Wow. But there's twenty three, and then one of them's full of pegs. Nice. Yeah. I mean, you can get a super OCD on the oh, stuff, yeah. on the beats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Uh, let's take another quick break. We'll be right back. Yeah. Big Ray's The Alaskan Outfitter, committed to outfitting Alaskans across the state since 1947. Whether you're a recreator, parent, guide, or corporate buyer, Big Ray's has the gear you need tailored for Alaska's harsh conditions. At Big Ray's, you'll find brands like Carhartt, Grundens, Darn Tough, FXD, Okiware, and more. Big Ray's is your one-stop shop for both outdoor gear and rugged work attire. Check out their new exclusive line of durable but affordable waders, inspired by and named after the majestic Aralik River in remote western Alaska. The Aralik wader was designed by Alaskans and proven for the diverse waters of the last frontier. Visit Big Rays at any of their five locations statewide, two in Anchorage, two in Fairbanks, one in Kodiak, or check them out online at BigRays.com. Tailored Restoration, helping Alaskans turn disasters into new beginnings since 1972. Their 24-hour services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, and repairs. Tailored built its reputation with years of committed and reliable service to the community with innovative restoration and home remodeling. When you have an unexpected home issue at the most improbable time, Tailored has an emergency response number with trained professionals available to help you anytime, day or night. Tailored Restoration has locations to serve you in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Give them a call at 907-344-1239 or make an appointment today at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and Overlander products. If you want to customize your vehicle, talk to the team at Total Truck where you'll find their expertise along with top brands such as ARE, RSI Smart Caps, Goose Gear, Eye Camper, Front Runner, Rigid Lights, Rhino Lining Bed Liners, and everything you need to outfit your truck or SUV. Want to turn your truck into a sleeping option? They have rooftop tents, custom camping equipment, electronics, and solar energy packages to keep you powered up deep in the backcountry. Stop by their store location on Dowling between the new and old Seward Highway or check them out at TotalTruckAK.com. I do have like a very specific bead question I've been wanting to ask the whole time. Okay. Okay, so it kind of is on the same topic, but this so is steelhead fishing over the last like 10 years, more and more, more and more and more people are using beads, especially in the spring. And I'm like, dude, there's not a lot of eggs floating around, man. Like there's just not, but they're using these big like 12 mil beads. What are your thoughts on that? And My thoughts are simple. It's just an attractor, right? Yeah. It's, it's something that triggers, and, you know, if you get it close enough to them, they're going to respond to it. And I think that's why people tend to fish those bigger ones. Uh -huh. um, not that a, an eight is sometimes effective. Yeah. Um, tends to. But, uh, yeah, I think that's that's I think that's all it is. They're not feeding. Yeah. I think it's more of a, a response to you know, something in their area. If mm. you had to pick a steelhead bead for the spring, what would it be? From what we have? Yeah. 
Um, we saw a lot of Katie's Dipper for, you know, kind of the spring steelhead. And that's uh-huh. one of those that's kind of, it's got that bright, really, you know, kind of, yeah, hue to it. Are we talking uh, Do you have Yakutat that, yeah. or? Yakutat, Anchor. We're talking which one you fish. Yeah. So I'll be honest with you, I, I don't <laughs> typically fish steelhead uh-huh. with beads. Oh. Yeah, I, d- I don't either. Oh, this bright. Oh, that thing okay. is bright. Yeah. yeah. And it has like a really. like It's a, really uh, like a hot pink almost. It has that like kind of purple translucent hue. With the Barbie? And Barbie? so that what is this one called? That's Katie's Dipper. And this is an eight? That is an eight, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was oh, just yeah, surprised to see that as someone who's like we've just done that as a family fish steal it as a family since i was a young kid and yeah. um to see so many people fishing beats and i've put them on and caught fish too but yeah i don't fish them they're effective much. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 i don't fish them much but uh even some of our like main crew that have been going with us for 30 years you know they've swapped over to beads all the time that's all yeah. they're fishing so yeah. um yeah i know the uh we saw a lot of the those in a 12 mil 10 and 12 for Yakutat, yeah, like that, so. yeah, probably cheaper to lose a bead than a it is, dollar and a dollar llama, llama. Or something. yeah, 100 yeah. percent. And the yeah. water, the d- water difference to what you're fishing a Dalai Lama in than a bead, bead is way more flexible for fishing than a Dalai Lama. So, when it comes to beads, do you you got glacial water, so to speak, like that super silty mm. water? Do you think that? that silt plays an effect on the way that bead performs in the water or the way it, it works, so to speak. The way it shines. The way it shines, yeah. I, I do. I think it's, um, we'll say, it's it's hard to really justify, but we'll say let's take a sockeye that's in the keen eye, right? And, you know, we, we've seen, I've seen sockeye on willow before. Um, while the initial drop of that egg is probably fairly similar um it's the different um ph levels and everything else that's involved in that water um that's going to really change how that egg color shifts and i I, so i think you know that's where you see um you know i I tend to stick with more of the orange and reds down south and more of the peaches yellowies you know creamy kind of colors up north Mm. um that's just what i typically kind of see you know how the eggs develop I, w- I you know I wish I was at a point where I could have a science team that uh, could measure all that stuff for yeah. me and we could actually come totally. back with an actual scientific answer. But uh, yeah, just uh, enjoying it, playing around with it. But yeah, I, I definitely think those you know those silty glacially fed waters they they produce different hues. Yeah, yeah. And the water would be temperature and would be colder in those, right? In yeah, glacier. So I wonder how much that impacts that as well. So yep, you got like pH, temperature. Yeah. Wonder what else? The flow, the you know, the amount of um, substrate those eggs are bouncing against, yeah. right? Changes. Yeah. Um, yep. How they, you know, they kind of bruise up, if you will, mm-hmm. and you know, so they'll change, you know, colors where they're getting hit, as opposed to you know where it's just sitting. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, how's your trivia game? Not very good. Zero to ten? Probably a one. Okay. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've, uh, we do trivia every week, but, uh, it's very specific to our guest a lot of times. So, um, today's one of those days. So you probably have, uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, a head start on these guys. So, uh, let's let these other guys be the first guessers and Fair then, enough and then you be the third one ken just because uh i think uh yeah you'll probably nail all these okay well the, the first one is going to be real fun so what species of fish lays the biggest egg and how big is that egg so this is in the whole world in it's the a, whole world yeah what species of fish rivers lakes oceans creeks ice lakes with ice on it you know Hold all this on, stuff let me think let me think the sturgeon you think it's sturgeon and mm. then how big's the egg mill wise uh you can do no. millimeters oh, or inches i'm gonna say you go wrong. what millimeters or inches you know whatever you want wrong, bro. Oh, 
wrong. Ooh. You ever seen that sturgeon caviar? No, I Shit, haven't. Like, like small? Yeah. Real small? Oh, okay. No, I haven't seen that. The largest egg. Oh, which is producing the largest egg? Okay. Yeah, what fish is not the most eggs? The, the largest, largest eggs. And egg. how big is that? Is an individual egg. Okay. Well, you just said my answer's wrong, but I'm going to stick with it. Sturgeon. Ah, oh, that's a tough one. I don't know what, like, those big GTs and those roosters, man. I don't know what their eggs mm-hmm. are like. Well, just guess. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But I'm going to say a chum because those chums, man, they chum have salmon? monster chum. eggs. Chum yeah. salmon? All right. Yep. Okay. You know, I can't I can't say I've seen anything bigger than, than a Chinook egg. Um, uh-huh. And so, you know, probably in that 11 mil range. All right. But, you know, I... We're talking the world, right? Yeah. So who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so it's a whale shark, and the um, the biggest egg on record was measured at twelve inches by five and a half inches by three and a half inches. So a whale was, shark lays eggs. Yeah, it wasn't even round. Yeah, it's a fish. Whale sharks have fish. Yeah, I thought they give like live birth, like no, a shark. No, that's a mammal. <laughs> sharks they give live uh, well i don't i don't wait don't sharks give, I no, don't. They're sharks little, are eggs too yeah they're in weird looking eggs yeah but a whale shark damn what do you think it's that? eggs and they're giant that's is what fair. it I, this fair. is unreal how big this egg is yeah that's 12 so the biggest one was 12 inches by five and a half by three and a half inches so they you know it wasn't perfectly round oh there it is up there yeah this one here what it looks like or right yeah. there next to it the little brown the br- over one more yeah oh this little thing oh that looks weird yeah so that's crazy okay uh, i thought okay. that was pretty good okay so now now the next question is all right it's going to be um which salmon species lays the smallest egg and how many millimeters is the egg hmm I'm going with reds. Okay, reds and how big? I want to. Is that average? I think the reds egg. are like. Uh, aren't they six mil eggs? Okay, six. So then, Daniel, what do you guess. think? It's a good guess. You want fish? I think you're right. I think you're right. I mean, I am the mayor. So. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go sockeye as well. I think that's the right answer, but I'm gonna say. S- See, what are these ones? This guy. These are six. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say five. Five. All right, Ken. Nah, bro. I'll have to go uh, pink. With a six, going pink? Six, mil, yeah. six. All right. Okay. From the Google search that I did to find all this stuff. Eggs vary in size from tiny sockeye row, which average 5.6 millimeters. So that's the smallest. No way. ADF and G, I'm here all year. Sign me up. No, you went over. You lose. You said this six. Is, this is Google. 5.6. That's damn close. No, six is over. The showcase showdown doesn't go if you go over. Uh, in, America, we get, in America, we get a curve. <laughs> so we Bob. round up. Don't go, you, don't, you don't want to upset Bob Barker. Yeah, man. We've seen Bob him at Happy no. Gilmore. So, Ken, you don't feel like that's correct? So, I, I don't know. That might be skewed. Um, so, are we saying... A developed egg that is actually being deposited, or are we just saying an egg in general? Because I think a sockeye egg at five mil or five and a half mil, that's uh, immature. That's probably a uh, sockeye that's been harvested where mm-hmm. the eggs have been pulled and, and deposited, in my experience. How big do you think it should be after it's... They're usually in that six to seven mil range okay. yeah, once, they're, once they're developed. Mm. Um, Kendall we got one more part. Oh, we got one more. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that was the low end. What's the high end? So what sh- what salmon species lays the biggest egg on average, and how many millimeters is that egg on average? Chinook. What's the size? Man, I haven't seen one of those in a while. <laughs> So everybody in the state can say that. <laughs> wow. That's right. Um, if those were six. We found some old ones from like 2015 that we had cured Oof. last year. 
I was like, oh, damn. When the next time it opens somewhere, we're going. Uh, I'll go 10. That's you pretty 10 big, mils? but I'll go 10. All right. I think that's a little big. Mayor? I, I, uh, Chinook 10. I think it's a chum still. Chum? Those chum eggs are monsters. And how uh, you're going chum and how big? You going like 14? You going six? How big? 20? going 10 10 all right yeah. Ken? so I, i'll go with the chinook um probably 11 mil 11 um, all right however with a caveat that i think in today's uh fishery yeah those chinook eggs are smaller oh really definitely smaller mm. and the chum yeah. eggs are, are are bigger getting bigger but the what? chums are getting bigger too why so. do you think the chinook eggs are getting smaller the, the fish are smaller yeah definitely um, yeah that's true Okay, so this is a Google thing, of course, but it's on the same website. Is um, it's a chump? Yeah, and it's saying that it's eight point three millimeters. So that doesn't look right. So you went over. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I got the species right, baby. <laughs> That's only half the battle. Just yeah. add that to the repertoire. Listen. Hashtag fish dad. <laughs> I mean, no. we, we this table probably has more knowledge than the Google does at this. Yeah. So. Google isn't right about <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, it's still an fun. To talk doesn't about. look doesn't even look right it's, at all. It's just fun. <laughs> Google's full of shit. Yeah. Let's see what website it was. Google, we still need your sponsorship. Let's see what, what yeah. website it was. Let's see if I still have it up. If someone knows any connections in the Google world, we need Google no, to sponsor no, our no. trivia. Ken, where can people buy the beads? Um, so we we have them out here in Anchorage at Mountain View Sports and Mossies. Um, out in the valley, have them at Three Rivers. Um, and then down on the peninsula right now, we have... Uh, Kenai Cash Outfitters and Gwen's next to them. They both carry them through the summer. And then uh, down in Soldat in the Wilderness Way. Okay. And then, of course, our website now, which we've had up for, the, for almost a year. So From the website. Nice. Which one is Wilderness Way? Soldat now. Is that across the street from the uh, same parking lot as Sportsman's? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's a Got nice it. store. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. Really cool shop. Yeah. Um, What other things do you... Are you into Alaska wise snow machine hunting anything? Um, so I I don't hunt. Um, I have a wife and daughters who, who will not who refuse to eat wild game, which, mm. which is do they eat breaks salmon? My heart. Mm -hmm. They don't like fish either, mm. and so I don't harvest a lot of salmon. Um, but I spend my winters, you know, I like snowshoeing. I like playing with the dogs, um, okay. getting out. But we spend a lot of time doing this, um, which you know keeps me inside warm and i'm okay with that you know uh during the summer you know i like uh you know, 20 years in the service will make you very uh simple mm. once you get out you know so yeah I, I like mowing my yard i like keeping you know trucks clean and take you know tinkering with things yeah. and, and you know just building stuff and so I spend most of my time fishing. I yeah. do. I, I put in a lot of uh, sounds a like lot a good days. retirement. Yeah, well, it's business <laughs> research. You know? Yeah, yeah that's that's right. Right. it's a it's a write off, honey. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go to is work. it a write off? I bet it is. <laughs> I bet it is. Yeah, <laughs> the R and D side of things. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, uh, if you had to pick one rod to spend all this time fly mm -hmm. fishing, trout, there what you, what, do you what, what, what's the rod you're picking? What size and so. I'd say up here, um, my typical go-to is a seven weight, mm -hmm. and I like a ten foot rod. Most of my rods are ten foot nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as manufacturer, I tell you, what, I've been really impressed with the Alaska Rod Co. rods. Yeah. Um, I, I beat the snot out of a couple of them this year, and uh, yeah, they're really nice. Um, yep, they can handle abuse. I'm not afraid. Uh, and, and hope Matt doesn't take offense to this. I'm not afraid to break his rods. Yeah, you totally. Know what I mean? I've yeah. got a couple older sages that, you know, I'm almost afraid to fish them anymore because six months to get them back, six to eight months to get them back. Yeah. Um, you know, if there's some of the legacy rods that they still can even repair, you're looking at 200 bucks. Yeah. Um, and then there's, you know, some older ones that they won't even touch anymore. And so it's yeah. like, you know, I, I would rather go with, and, you know, the new rods anyways, they're much lighter. They, mm -hmm. they respond better they fish better and matt's using quality blanks and uh 
you know, I know I know a couple other rod manufacturers up here that do their own little thing, and you know they've got really good stuff. Um, and I'm I, you know I'd like to look into more and kind of get away from those mainstream. Yeah, if totally. You will. Yeah, you know, support local. I think yeah. is important nowadays. Um, you know, staying in the U.S., uh, yep. staying local, supporting yep. Alaska. You know, businesses as much as we can. One hundred percent. And it's unreal, Matt's warranty process. It so is. Dude, it's on my list. It's extra. on my Christmas list. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, <laughs> I'm sad to say, or not really sad, but a little bit ashamed. I, I broke I broke one rod three times this year and another one once. All from my own, you know, own errors. Uh-huh. The fact that, um, you know, I got them back within a week yeah you know, it's unreal. ready it's to go and it was yeah. like man this is cool you know so yeah. um and the warranty process is pretty quick he was saying that he builds extra ba- blanks for every rod yeah yeah and i went with the um he was offering up those guide series rods um i i love the feel of, of cork um and so that was you know a huge turn on for me i picked up you know a couple of those from him and uh yeah they're just yeah way to go Along with that question, um, they say, hey, Ken, you can only choose one river. Oh, wow. rest of your life. One river. I can't, yeah, I can't answer <laughs> that. There's no way. Only one. Uh, you you only get, get one. one huh? You get one. We're going to drop you off there every day. In the world? Yeah. And that makes it even worse. Um, all right, so if I could choose one and I would be dropped off there. Um, in succession, right? Mm-hmm. It was the only thing I could ever That's fish. That's it. This is the last river you're going to fish. Uh, the Connectuck. Connectuck. Yeah. Okay. What about you? I, I love the Volcana. I would just pick that one. I, I know it all now. So I think I would pick that one. Adrian? Campbell? Camel Creek, <laughs> Upper Huffman, <laughs> Bird Creek. Yeah, it's my favorite. But, yeah. That's a tough question, huh? It is a tough question. Yeah, it really is. Well, Ken is a good answer. But if I could go over and over and over, like just one, just drop me up at Delta Clearwater. Mm. I'm gonna catch grayling all day long. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, another um, wild and scenic river. Shout out to Teddy. Yeah. What's top, th- top five river. Not that you fished. Top five that you that's on your bucket list in the state. Uh, Woolick is number one right now. I'm um, trying to work that out for next year. Um, the Connect Talk, Kisa Rollick, Knack Knack. Like I, I got to go with a good old Montana Creek. Yeah. You just can't beat that one. I love Montana. Yeah. Montana is nice. Yeah. Ton is nice. Plan for extra seats on those other trips. <laughs> Party of four. Party of four. You have a memorable, <laughs> uh, most memorable fish you caught using one of your beads? Is there one that you stand out? I could tell you this year there is. I mean, and I'm sure every year there's been, but this year I had one. Um, end of August, maybe first week of September, a willow was on fire. It was good. And uh, I'm, I'm probably, if if I could, if I could, you know, throw an accurate guess, and I'm not overestimating, but, you know, it was a good 30-inch trout mm-hmm. that uh, I, I fought and and I did not land. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I seen him. Uh, he came up on me, he jumped ran and i just i i couldn't turn yeah and he was in the you know in the stuff and yeah that was that but that fish sticks with me because those are you don't see very many of those oh yeah on willow uh-huh. and the ones you know those bigger fish on willow they know where to go they've been you know they're they're that size for a reason they yeah. know what's up and and so to land something you know in that upper 20 class you know into those 30s it, it takes you know it takes a lot of luck. It takes a lot of things to go right. Yeah. And uh, this year didn't happen, but that fish still stands out to me. I, I still think about that one. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. You know it too, huh, right away? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's on there. If you could only fish one of your beads, which would it be? Ooh. 
I can't answer that either. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, um, all right, I'll tell you what, that one that the, I the showed you. Yeah. <laughs> the one we couldn't touch where we could see it. <laughs> right now, that's the one. I would, if I could only fish one, I would fish that one. That's awesome. So he, he went off of your most memorable fish this year, right? Let me backtrack it up or okay. back it up to 36-year-old Ken just starting out. You made your first bead. What was it like to catch that first fish on your first ever bead? Realizing, like, yo, this it. shit worked. So mm-hmm. we're, we're talking the South Central beads. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the South Central. Yeah, your specific. I, yeah, I threw an age out. Just, no, right. Um, no, that, that was definitely, it was cool. You know, it was, um, we had had, you know, some colors that we were playing around with. And then I spent that year guiding. And that was really kind of, hey, look, I got my own stuff. And I would just throw those on there. And so picking fish up on those, it was like, man, this is cool. You know, yeah. like I've got something that nobody else has got. Yeah. You know, we're catching fish. And I didn't get to fish trout enough. I wish I wish I had more trout time during yeah, that year yeah. of guiding. But, uh, you know, the time I did get to trout fish, it was, yeah, it was a it was a pretty surreal feeling. You know, it's like, oh, this is cool. And, hey, maybe we could do something with this. One of those giddy moments. Yeah. You yeah. stick those beads in your pocket and don't tell anybody. <laughs> It's a it's a cool feeling to create something that other people enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you it get is. To you do know, that. and it is so humbling. Like you know, um, people message you on on Instagram or they tag you in their post, and it's like, yeah, hey, you know, I had the best day fishing on on your bees. It's like, oh, that's cool, man. Oh you yeah, know, like that's that's really cool. You yeah. Know? So, um, and you know, I don't like being the limelight or anything like that. And so when people you know, they, they tag it and they kind of promote it themselves. That's a, that's the best yes. feeling. You know, I'm not paying for marketing. I'm not, you know, going around, I'll, I'll do a trade show once a year or something mm-hmm. like that just to, you know, but yeah, when, when a product kind of speaks for itself and people are starting to sell it, then that's a good feeling. I yeah. Think, so. Yeah. Organic growth. That's the way to go. Absolutely. Yep. You got an ice fishing bead for me? <clears throat> You know, I I bet you, I, I promise you that they'll catch they'll catch fish. But I never uh, tried a bead actually. Yeah, yeah nice fish either. But uh, give it a shot. Yeah. Now that you bring it up, yeah, yeah, this year <laughs> yeah. might be the year to, yeah, to try that. You yeah. done you done much ice fishing? You know, I I don't get down with the ice fishing that much. Um, I go a couple times a year if someone yeah. else invites me. Um, it's just you know it's one of those things I like to be active when I'm fishing. I like. Yeah, I like the water moving. I like everything yeah. else that goes involved, you know, that's involved um, and associated with, you know, walking a creek and stuff like that, or you know, fishing a lake. And um, you don't, to me, you don't get that ice fishing. Um, but to each their own, you know. Everybody, yeah. I mean, then again, I've never hooked into you know, well, them big one boys, of those big lake mm-hmm. lakers, and all that. So that might change my perspective some. But yeah, um, yeah I enjoy you know kind of the style of fishing that I yeah. like and. Yeah, yeah, that's good. good. Yeah, what's uh, what's on the horizon for South Central? So right now, um, like I said, you know, kind of got transition period for me and the wife. Like you know, kids are starting to leave; they're getting older. They're trying to figure out their place in the world, and so it's like you know, what do we do after that? And how does the South Central bead piece tie into that? And so we've been looking at um, some property, um, you know both for building our own home, but having a larger facility. So that later on, you know, view where I can bring equipment in Mm -hmm. is a possibility. Um, But uh, yeah, that's, that's a struggle in itself trying to to deal with all that, you know, and the, and the, uh, yeah, the residential pieces and finding builders and, but, you know, we've been doing a lot of legwork. I've talked to some really good people and kind of hopeful and maybe this one piece uh, on a really, cool part of uh the willow area uh might come together we'll see <laughs> i'm in the same boat as you <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we might be neighbors oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um sc bead co is the instagram handle um the website is scbeadco.com um thank you for coming in ken and thank you for talking with us about your passion and building this thing and and you have the alaska made bear on your beads 
Um, we love to support um, Alaskans doing Alaskan things, and all our listeners like to support Alaskans doing their things. Um, so thank you for your passion and, and for doing what you're doing, and it really shines in your work and, and, and what you're doing. So thank you for coming in and chatting with us. Well, thanks for having me, guys. This has been, uh, it's been pretty cool. So yeah. thank, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, I mean, to, to jump and, like, go do follow your passions, man fucking salute you for it and uh, alaska needs more people like you creating cool stuff man thank you yeah 100 percent agree 100 percent. and then just to have our own local bead maker so to speak uh so we call it bead maker bead beater. maker <laughs> bead me beater beatery beatery <laughs> we'll have to think whisper. of a, a, a real name to make it sounds fancy yeah. like a uh beaterist beatery. Yeah, what do they call them? Uh, janitorial engineers or something like that? <laughs> oh. A bediologist? Uh, bediologist. Yeah, <laughs> bediologist. There you go. There we go. There we go. But a lot of people take uh, pre-made beads that you buy at a big box store, and they'll doctor them up, mm. you know, however mm -hmm. they, they feel with nail polish. But to actually have someone here, local, and is actually out kicking those rocks, finding what is in the water, you know, and then replicating that, taking that and turn it into an actual product that is successful and people can use over and over again and create memories between whether they're on vacation or with their family just hanging out. I mean, I think that's a cool thing, especially to have it coming from our own backyard. Instead of, yeah, absolutely. some big chain in the lower forty-eight, you know. Absolutely, yeah. I agree with that one hundred percent. And it's it's cool because um, those people that are coming up to visit, or those people that are just getting started, those young you know, young guys, you know, having a bead that that is going to at least be in the general direction is going to you know, make them enjoy their experience more. It's you know, it's, it's we're in an age where information is everywhere and it's there if you need it, and so. Um, if it's already there, like here, you know, use our product. It's been tested. It's, you know, yeah. it's, it, it produces and yeah, there's going to be some different techniques on how it's delivered and you might not be as effective as, you know, someone else, but, you know, having that there as an option for people that are coming up, I think is, is, is pretty important, you know, and it also feeds into, um, you know, those, those, those pro shops, that's where tourists, I call them tourists, but vacationers come up you know mm -hmm. they're, they're going right into those spots and yeah and to see something that's this is made in alaska tested in alaska sold by alaskans that's what you know that's what we need out of this area so yep that's agree with right. that 100 percent. because it could be daunting you go in the big store and you're like <laughs> oh, i don't know what to get here and then you're like well this guy's from here right he right knows right. what he's doing you know right just having that bear yeah the main alaska bear i mean yeah that's important if i'm if i'm an outer towner you know, I'm an avid fisherman coming up to fish here, and I I don't know this area. I'm used to fishing down south, and you're fishing oh, yeah. dry flies, you know? You're like, weights, split shots on my line? What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're like, this isn't fly fishing. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I can go by the run of the mill at Sportsman's, or I can go to Mossy's, and, well, there's that pack right there, and it's got made in Alaska, so they got to know what's up. Yeah, shout out to all those guys too that are supporting your yeah. business and all yeah, that. 100%. It's so cool to have yeah. those local shops supporting the local uh, the local companies and local guys yep. and tying flies and doing the bead painting and doing the fly tying classes and all that stuff. That's just that's yeah, that's great. They're so accepting of those you know those kind of local um, local people to you know that's a big risk, right? You know, yeah. you, you bring a product in made by some Joe schmo off the street that says made in Alaska. It's like, well, you know. Mm -hmm this is going in my shop. So now it's, you know, part of me and those guys took a risk with me and yeah. you know, they're, uh, yeah, I work with some really good shop owners. So that's great. That's great. Um, thank you, Alaska. Thank you for listening. Alaska project.com. Thank you to the Patreon members for listening. Thank you to the sponsors for sponsoring this show. Um, please support the sponsors that supports us. And as always, Alaska, stay wild. You remember my speaking to you of what I call your overcautiousness. Are you not overcautious when you assume that you cannot do what the enemy is constantly doing?
The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Barney Sports Chalet, supplying hunters with the best hand-selected gear since 1963. The exclusive home of Frontier Gear, built for the rugged Alaskan terrain. Your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Visit Barney's today at 906 West Northern Lights. Big Rays, the Alaskan outfitter, committed to outfitting Alaskans across the state since 1947. Whether you're a recreator, parent, guide, or corporate buyer, Big Rays has the gear you need tailored for Alaska's harsh conditions. Check out their new exclusive line of Rolic waders. Big Rays for all your outdoor gear and rugged work attire. BigRays.com. Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services. Helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck and Alaska Overlander, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and overlanding products, providing all-inclusive rental vehicles and trailers custom outfitted to explore the Alaskan backcountry with a unique and convenient traveling experience. The TreehouseAK.com, located at 341 Boniface Parkway, Alaska's own and grown cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation, with exclusive products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce cards, and more. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. Marijuana has intoxicating effects and may be habit forming and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children, and marijuana should not be used by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. The Bait Shack, located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They are the go to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Lawn Pro AK, Alaska's year-round professional property maintenance team. Services include weekly lawn care, custom landscaping, fertilizing, weed control, turf repair, and more. Schedule your free estimate at lawnproak.com. Alaska's OG Cider Company, Double Shovel, crafting gluten-free colonial-style ciders, founded as a healthier non-inflammatory brew option. Drop by their pop and tap room in Anchorage off of 58th and Arctic or visit the second location in Kodiak. Double Shovel, award-winning ciders. The Alaska chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. BHA is the voice of our Alaskan public lands, waters, and wildlife. Their goal is to uphold our hunting and fishing legacy while keeping our public lands wild. Stand up today and join BHA at backcountryhunters.org. Should you not claim to be at least his equal in prowess and act upon the claim? I say try. If we never try, we shall never succeed. This proposition is a simple truth and it's too important to be lost sight of for a moment. If we cannot beat the enemy where he now is, we never can. It is all easy if our troops march as well as the enemy, and it is unmanly to say they cannot do it.